10 Ezra Miller. The Flash star has made themselves unhirable after a string of arrests in Hawaii, which caused quite a stir on social media and turned the internet against them. It's easy to see why, as their latest arrest on the 19th of April was for a second degree attack. Police say that around 1.30 a.m. the actor was asked to leave a venue and quickly became irate, reportedly throwing a chair, which struck a 26 year old female on the forehead. In fact, the police say that they have received at least 10 calls about the actor since the 7th of March, with complaints ranging from filming people at a gas station to refusing to leave the sidewalk area of a restaurant. Miller has also been charged with disorderly conduct and harassment after an altercation the previous night at a karaoke bar in Hilo. Miller has since been released from jail pending further investigation, but let's just say that it doesn't look good. Number 9. Will Smith the actor shocked fans, viewers, and Chris Rock when he walked onto the stage at the 2022 Academy Awards and slapped the comedian across the face, then casually just walked back to his seat. The incident occurred while Rock was introducing the award for best documentary, and he joked about Jada Pinkett Smith's haircut. It was then that Smith silently got up on stage, walked over to Rock, and slapped him across the face on live television. The shocking moment not only got him banned from the Oscars for the next 10 years, but has already cost Smith several projects which have either been cancelled altogether or shelved in the fallout from that infamous slap. For example, Apple ended up delaying the release of his much-awaited film Anticipation following the incident. Netflix also canned a sequel to his 2017 action film Bright, although they claimed that this cancellation was unrelated to the slap. And there are also additional projects Smith had lined up that have been getting smacked down, leading many to believe that his career will never fully recover. Number 8. Chrissy Teigen 35-year-old cookbook author faced heavy criticism this year following reports of cyberbullying. Many celebrities came forward to accuse her, including Lindsay Lohan, Farrah Abraham, and Project Runway star Michael Costello. Teigen publicly apologized for her past behavior multiple times, including a lengthy post on Medium, which she shared on social media. She also opened up about being put in the cancel club following the controversy. Teigen wrote on Instagram in July, going outside sucks and just doesn't feel right. Being at home alone with my mind makes my depressed head race. She ended her post jokingly asking if there was a cancel club reunion that she could attend. From there, Tegan was dealt a huge blow after reports circulated that retail giant Bloomingdale's had pulled out of a deal that they had in place with her. Macy's also said that it was not actively selling her cookbook, Cravings, on their website. And it's difficult to see how her career will recover from such bad publicity. Number 7. Chris Knopf Following the release of City spin-off and just like that, two women came forward to accuse the actor of two separate incidents of SA that occurred between 2004 and 2015. The next day, a third woman, an actress and director Zoe Lister-Jones, accused the actor of misconduct on the set of Law & Order. Not has since been dropped by his talent agency and will not be appearing in the upcoming episodes of The Equalizer. The actor denied the allegations in a statement to Us Weekly, saying, quote, the encounters were consensual, but it was much too late because eventually his scenes in and just like that were deleted, making his character's death scene his final appearance in the series. And that seems like it's pretty much it for his career in Hollywood. Number 6. Drew Barrymore Drew faced intense blowback for her decision to resume taping her talk show despite the months-long writer's strike that was going on this year. And this is what made her wildly unpopular. According to SAG After Rules, as long as hosts or guests don't discuss or promote struck work, then she would have been in the clear, since the network code agreement allows daytime hosts to perform hosting duties. But the thing is that her show operates with union writers, so new episodes would have required moving forward without their writers on staff. At the time, the WGA condemned her decision. They said Drew Barrymore should not be on the air while her writers are on strike fighting for a fair deal. In reality, shows like this cannot operate without writing, and that is struck work. But what really got people angry about this was all the hypocrisy, seeing that back in May, Drew stepped down as host of the MTV Movie and TV Awards in a show of support and solidarity to the striking writers. At the time, she said, I have listened to the writers, and in order to fully respect them, I will pivot from hosting the MTV Movie and TV Awards live in solidarity with the strike. But then, only a few months later, it seemed as though she had gone back on her stance, which is why she was immediately labeled a scab. Number 5. Selena Gomez 
The actress and singer completely lost her cool when fans started attacking her new boyfriend, Benny Blanco. Now she got herself in hot water for defending him and going on an embarrassing Instagram rant professing her love for him. So all of this crazy drama started when she confirmed that she's been secretly dating the music producer for about six months and apparently no one knew a thing about it. But as soon as she revealed their relationship on Instagram, her own fans started attacking her in the comment section and things got heated very quickly. People accused Benny of not treating Selena well and disrespecting her in the past. They dug up an interview that he did in 2020 where he called Selena a cookie cutter pop artist while praising her ex-boyfriend Justin Bieber. And if you watch this interview, it's pretty obvious that he doesn't think too highly of her as an artist because he also makes fun of her makeup line and insinuates that she's just not a serious musician. But when fans brought this to Selena's attention, she got extremely defensive and started ranting about how she just doesn't care. She wrote, he is still better than anyone I've ever been with. Facts. She also told another upset fan who said that Benny has put a curse on her that he has been the best thing that's ever happened to her. And the fighting did not stop there. From that point on, it only got worse. Number four, Drake Bell. The former Nickelodeon star caused a lot of panic earlier in the year when he was declared missing and endangered by police. He was then found the following day and claimed that he had just left his phone in the car for the night and that's why he wasn't answering. But this whole incident had people wondering, is Drake Bell really okay? He had fans worrying about about his mental health with all of his recent antics. Back in December, he was spotted inhaling substances out of a balloon while his son was in the backseat of his car. Eyewitnesses said that he was inhaling and deflating this balloon for more than half an hour while his son seemed to be asleep. A couple weeks later, he checked into rehab to try to get treatment. Soon after that, his wife of five years announced that she was leaving him and moving to Florida with their son. She revealed that she was filing for divorce and a source told Page Six that she had enough of her husband's antics. Quote, they had some incredible times before, but he needs to focus on being healthy and they'll always be great co-parents in the future. So for a lot of fans, the unraveling of Drake's public persona is very upsetting to see. Number three, Amanda Vines. Although the actress has been out of the spotlight for several years now, she resurfaced on social media last month and looks completely different, leaving fans to wonder what on earth was going on with Amanda Vines. In the latest video she posted, it is clear that she now looks completely unrecognizable. Amanda recently went on Instagram Live to talk about the release of her new podcast, and fans were shocked with her platinum blonde mullet, blue eyebrows, septum ring, and the heart-shaped tattoo that she had on her face. While it's true that she has been away from the spotlight for a long time, she looks like a totally different person now, especially if you compare it to the way that she used to look in the 2000s, back when she was still acting. So she's clearly doing better these days, considering that she is trying to get herself back out there. But that's also come with a lot of hardships and after a long battle with her mental health. And while a lot of fans are dying to support her comeback, there are some who are genuinely concerned about her. Many were asked asking where and when she seemed to get treatment, and they even compared her meltdown to the same one that Britney Spears went through. One user commented that it's sad to see the life gone from her eyes. So it's safe to say that there has been just as much positive feedback as there has been negative. Number two, Garrett Hedlund. The star of Friday Night Lights, Tron Legacy, and the United States vs. Billie Holiday was sadly arrested for public intoxication after he created a ruckus in Franklin, after he created a ruckus in Franklin County, Tennessee and he was eventually released on a $2,000 bond. The man who called the authorities on the star also claimed that he attempted to jump out of a car earlier in the day. The arrest occurred just one day after the news broke that Garrett had split from his girlfriend at the time, Emma Roberts, with whom he shares a two-year-old son named Rhodes. At the time, he was also going through a series of other legal issues and he was previously arrested on two DUI charges in February back in 2020. He was arraigned the same month and was released after post posting a $100,000 bond. Garrett was then sued for negligence after allegedly causing a head-on collision because he passed out behind the wheel of his car and he ran a solid red light at a high rate of speed. His blood alcohol level tested at 0.36%, which is four times the legal limit. There were also open bottles of alcoholic beverages in the car that he tried to discard before the police arrived. 
So clearly he was still coping with the stress of the impending lawsuit. And coming in at number one, Doja Cat. The singer made headlines for all the wrong reasons when she started beefing with Stranger Things star Noah Schnapp, all for revealing a private conversation where she asked to be hooked up with his Stranger Things co-star Joseph Quinn. A screenshot of their exchange went viral after it was shared by Noah in a deleted TikTok, much to Doja's annoyance. The 26 year old singer then went live on TikTok calling these 17 year olds actions degrading, exploitative and super embarrassing. She claimed that what he did was so unbelievably socially unaware and whack. Even went as far to call him a snake, saying that he shared information that she did not feel comfortable with him sharing. So how do you think people responded to this drama? Well, everyone was surprised with just how much Doja blamed Noah, considering his age and the fact that in previous tweets, she has openly expressed her attraction towards Joseph, but in a lighthearted way. People largely supported Noah in the feud, no surprise there. And Doja ended up losing 200,000 Instagram followers in the week after she posted that video. Number 10, Percy Hines White. When the Netflix series Wednesday premiered last year, the world collectively agreed that it was fantastic. It was dark, fun, mysterious, and it was well written for the most part. The only side plot that really added nothing to the show was the love triangle between Wednesday, the coffee shop boy, and Percy Hines White. Percy is a young up and coming actor who has appeared in plenty of TV shows and films in his short career. Wednesday skyrocketed him to a new level of recognition, which might be the cause of the allegations that were thrown his way earlier this year. An unnamed woman claimed that he mistreated her when they were living in Toronto. In June, he posted on his Instagram telling people that he needed to clear something up. According to Percy, he doesn't actually know who this woman is, and because of her misinformation, his family and friends were doxxed and received threats to end their lives. He continued to say that in addition to people using underage photos and examples of him acting in character to present him as hateful. He concluded his post by saying that the misinformation was distressing as well as thanked those who supported his efforts. After the hashtag cancel Percy gained momentum on Twitter, the accusations began to grow. So much hate just from a rumor started on Twitter when there's no legal accusations, proof of anything, it's just fans gone wild. Number nine, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart was set to host the Oscars back in 2019, but he was fired last minute. After a stand-up bit and a series of tweets had resurfaced that painted him as anti-LGBTQ+. In 2009, Kevin sent out a series of tweets that contained jokes about his feelings about his son potentially coming out in the future, making comments that he would break a dollhouse over his head if he saw him playing with it. He said some harsher stuff that I will not repeat and no one should look up because it's a little bit rough, and I can understand why a lot of people found the comments rude and damaging, because they were. At the time, the comments didn't go unnoticed, but at the time they flew under the radar in terms of media coverage. He then repeated the jokes on stage in his seriously funny special. There are also a few homophobic jokes written into the script of the film Get Hard, which I have seen and I do agree it's a little bit much. In 2015, when asked about the tweets, he told people that he would not be repeating the jokes that he made today, but that the only reason was because the times had been too sensitive. When he was announced as a host in 2018, the internet put a case together as to why he shouldn't be the host. The Oscars were forced to fire him in the role due to the alarming number of hate mail they were receiving on a daily basis. Before they actually let him go, they did give him an option to either apologize and own up or be let go. When Hart released a statement on Instagram, he decided to pass on an apology because he had apparently addressed it several times and acknowledged the rights and wrongs of the incident. The statement only led to more online outrage and sparked a debate, but the next day he released a separate statement apologizing for his actions and words and especially to the community he insulted. Number 8, Liam Neeson. Liam is a prolific actor. He might be a terrible dad on screen, but he is a great actor. Unfortunately, his acting skills were nowhere to be found when he was being interviewed by The Independent. As part of the interview, the conversation veered into life versus art, and if there was anything that had happened to him in his real life that influenced his film roles. This prompted Liam to tell the person interviewing him that he once walked the streets with a stabby jabby pen for weeks, just hoping to take his anger out after someone close to him was physically mistreated by a person of color. Liam said that he was a ashamed of his actions, but his remarks sparked widespread outrage. The interview was to promote the film Cold Pursuit, which is exactly what it sounds like, and the interviewer asked many questions, including how his character turns to anger, and he replied, something primal kicks in. He then went on a tangent about what one goes through when a family member close to you is hurt and there is nothing that can be done. He told a story that I can't repeat because of the heavy subject matter, but it was so intense that journalists interviewing him told BBC News that anyone hearing the thoughts he was reporting here 
here would be shocked and appalled in many ways. He himself has said that he's ashamed to think of the way that he used to say and do things and he is of course shocked at how awful he became. He received a ton of backlash but so far he hasn't been cancelled. Number 7 Casey Affleck Casey has had an interesting career. Being the brother of Ben Affleck has had its advantages. However, he was able to build a career for himself away from his brother to the point where he now has an Oscar for Manchester by the Sea. One year after he got that Oscar, he gave his first candid interview about the allegations that he had mistreated two women on the set of his independent film I'm Still Here. Affleck directed and produced the mockumentary and admitted in an interview that the teleprompter glitched and now it is a blue screen. Affleck directed and produced the mockumentary and admitted in an interview that the set was unprofessional. He admitted that he was the main contributor to the situation and took responsibilities for his actions. He then admitted that he made major mistakes and used poor judgement. It was one of the first movies that he had ever actually directed and he was unsure of what his role was according to himself. Meanwhile, the actual allegations range from Casey sneaking into bed with a woman to himself and the star of the film Joaquin Phoenix locking themselves in a hotel room with some ladies of the night. Affleck denied the allegations for a long time, but after admitting to his misdeeds, nothing really happened. Like He was cancelled in the eyes of the media and by his fans, but he still works, he writes, he produces films to this day. It's in smaller capacities, but still. Number 6 Tom Cruise While Tom may be an action movie star and was once a young Hollywood heartthrob, he actually has a massive temper. According to both former assistants as well as several co-stars from his past, Cruise is a regular toddler and is known to throw tantrums, being set off by small things. His former manager, Eileen Berlin, presented him with a gift on his 19th birthday. She gave him an album of teen magazine articles that were written about him, and apparently that set him off. He told his manager that he considered himself an adult, not a teen idol, and then whipped the book in her face. Another example of Tom's aggression was on display during the filming of the sequel to Top Gun, Maverick. During this time, Tom and the rest of the film crew were tasked to film on an actual aircraft carrier that was still in use by the military. One of the crew posted on Twitter calling out the audacity of Tom's behavior. He tweeted that Tom Cruise was actually on their ship telling people not to talk or look at him. After a few choice words, the crewmate made it very clear that Tom would never be welcome aboard the vessel again. These are just two examples though. Tom has blown up on film crews several times in the past to the point where his Mission Impossible 2 co-stars are constantly scared of him on set and what he may freak out about next. Number 5 Taylor Swift Unpopular opinion here. Taylor's tyranny of torment must end now. Taylor Swift has made a name for herself as a person who thrives on the ending of a relationship. Since the late 2000s, Taylor has been making millions in the music industry. Her songs like Love Story and 22 are anthems to many. The catchy tunes tend to come from a place of so called heartache, however. Taylor has thanked her exes on several occasions for inspiring the songs that made her who she is today. People like Tom Hiddleston, Harry Styles, Jake Gyllenhaal all have had a part to play in the inception of some true bops. The argument can and should be made that Taylor just needs to chill. She has made several songs that were good without the need to berate an ex and some of those songs are pretty revealing. Imagine if after you broke up with someone, there was a song that popped up on your phone by U2 called Why They Left You. Number 4 Ariana Grande Now she's got one less problem without you and honestly we'd probably be fine with that. Ariana rose to fame on the hit Nick series Victorious before spinning off and becoming a pop singing sensation. While she may be a good girl and good impressionist on screen, just ask Jimmy Fallon, behind the scenes she's reportedly cold, quiet, and a lot like Taylor Swift she hates on her exes through song. When she broke up with Saturday Night Live alumni Pete Davidson, she released a song called Pete Davidson, blatantly singing and trashing about her ex fiance. The song made her a lot of money, of which Pete received none. If you're gonna trash someone, at least give them a little piece of that cheddar. On top of this, her behavior in general has been pretty chaotic. She once left a meet and greet because she didn't like the way the photos were turning out. Those people paid hundreds of dollars and she was like, yeah, thank you next. In 2015, a video surfaced of Ariana visiting a Californian donut shop. The owners were beyond excited to see her until she began licking donuts and then putting them back on the shelves. According to the shop owners, those donuts were never paid for and they had to be thrown away. They really should have preserved them and sold them online though, because some people are weird. This incident also got her nixed from performing at a White House event despite multiple public apologies. The darkest of stories comes from a Hollywood insider though and has not been confirmed to be 100% true. The man in question was working with Ariana at a signing event and apparently she was all smiles until the event was over and they got in the elevator. According to them, her first words as the doors closed were, I hope they all freaking perish. Only she didn't say perish. Kinda makes you realize why Nickelodeon stars aren't as popular as adults. Number 3 Mariah Carey Mariah Carey may echo in your skull around this time of year, but according to most you should really keep that space in your head reserved for someone else, maybe Michael Bublé. Mariah has been known to be a bit of a 
diva over the years, apparently making outlandish requests and taking part in some really strange moments. For instance, when giving birth to her children, Mariah had the doctors play a live version of her song Fantasy, so that her voice was the first thing that they heard in the world. Unfortunately, it was on shuffle and it played Bird as the Word. No, but that would have been fantastic and scarred them for life. She's walked out of presidential events because she wasn't the center of attention. She makes people speak to her with a whiteboard the night before performances to preserve her voice, and literally made someone roll out a red carpet for her when she walks out of vehicles. Like that lady from Guardians of the Galaxy. She just is literally someone's job to crouch down and go. <laughs> Just all day. Needless to say, she's currently classified as a diva, but honestly, we should classify her as canceled because all I want for Christmas is a new song. Number two, Jared Leto. Jared Leto is an interesting fellow. Hey, it rhymes. He started his own religious group. He brings a new meaning to the word method acting. And let's face it, he kind of sucks. Over the past few years, reports from Jared's fellow actors are anything but positive. When he was the Joker, he left his fellow castmates used adult devices, pig heads, and live snakes in their trailers as gifts. He was trying to stay method as the Joker, but anyone on the receiving end of those gifts just wish he would go away. On top of that, he's been known to stay in character, meaning that if he's playing someone who's angry or silent, that's how he's going to be the entire time he's on set. This guy hasn't really been questioned for his actions at any point in recent history, only being called a weirdo, and then we just leave it at that. With his career still well on the rise, here's hoping Jared will eventually be called out for good and added to Hollywood's no-no list. Number one, Morgan Freeman. Yes, the voice of God himself, Morgan Freeman, has been a soothing soul for many, many years. To this day, families can hear Morgan narrate the world around them in an immersive 360 IMAX screen at the Science Center in Toronto. He may be a comfort to some, but according to a few women, Morgan is actually their nightmare. Morgan has been accused of inappropriate behavior on multiple occasions between 1991 and 2015. According to one production assistant from the film Going in Style, which is a bank heist movie featuring himself, Michael Caine, and Alan Arkin, Freeman subjected her to unwanted touching and comments about her figure and clothing on a near daily basis. Gentlemen, lend me your ear. This move is rarely well received. Get a new move. According to her, in one instance, Freeman attempted to lift her skirt and asked to see her underclothes. She was not the only one to speak out though. A senior member of the production staff on the film, Now You See Me Too, told CNN that Freeman harassed her and her female assistant on numerous occasions, making similar comments to figures in clothing. I could go on with more and more examples, but to save some time, I will boil it down for you. Morgan Freeman is a little creepy and I'm sorry to say it, but this dude needs to retire as soon as possible. Number 10, Thomas Gibson. Thomas made a name for himself, starring as one of the leads of the series, Criminal Minds. He was on the show for a few years, and in that time, he made a few problems for those unfortunate enough to be staff members of the series. There were some issues over the years that would have warranted some actions, like screaming at producers and writers for not doing a good job, but the incident that got him kicked off the show for good involved, well, a kick. In 2016, Thomas was swiftly fired from the series after an incident with a writer named Virgil Williams. An internal investigation revealed that Thomas kicked Virgil one day during production of an episode that Gibson was directing. As I said, this was not the first incident on set that really should have resulted in some kind of a punishment though. In 2013, he pleaded no contest to No No Juice related reckless driving after being arrested on suspicion of a DUI, and three years before that, he allegedly shoved an assistant director named Ian Wolfe during a late night location scene. That led to the studio ordering Gibson to take eight hours of anger management. According to most people on set, Thomas was a wild card. You know, some days he'd be friendly and accommodating, and then the next day he was ballistic. Number nine, Joaquin Phoenix. We understand a dedication to one's craft, and Joaquin is just a prime example. Joaquin's acting career has been going steady since he first appeared in the 1989 comedy Parenthood when he was in his mid-teens. While he's seen as one of the greatest actors in recent history, his reputation on set was tarnished thanks to a little freak out while filming the 2018 solo flick Joker. He appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live to promote the film when Jimmy played a behind the scenes clip of Joaquin getting loud and angry at a man named Larry and the constant whispering behind the cameras before dropping an F-bomb and storming off the set. When the cameras came back to the studio, Joaquin was just frozen in shock. He was clearly not expecting that clip to ever see the light of day. He explained that Larry was a cinematographer who was teasing Joaquin off set earlier in the day, calling him a diva and referring to him as Cher. In fact, during his onset outburst, 
you can hear him say calling me Cher. How is that an insult? He then explained that there's a lot of pressure on set, especially in a closed space like the apartment from the scene, and he apologized to the audience for having to see him behave in such a manner, which was met with applause. At the end of the day, he's a performer, and no harm came from this outburst, so if Larry's cool with it, we're cool with it. Number eight, Bill Murray Lake Toss. Bill Murray's gonna be on this list more than once, and for good reasons. For this entry, we're talking about the film What About Bob and its extremely toxic set while filming. Bill Murray was really getting on his co-star's nerves. Richard Dreyfuss from Jaws, literally berating and bullying this man between takes to get the best performance out of him. In the years since, he claimed that Richard encouraged him to do this, but Richard claims that that never happened and is a complete lie. Considering the incident that this entry is actually about though, he got off pretty easy. On the same set, Bill got into an altercation with producer Laura Ziskin, a woman who is so respected that she has an achievement award named after her. This woman was subject to Bill's diva behavior and one day during a disagreement, Bill Murray picked her up and just tossed her into a lake. When describing the event, she claims that it was playful, but according to everyone else on the set, it was just the wrong word to use. Number seven, Jenna Ortega. Jenna participated in one of the most popular streaming shows of this year on Netflix, playing Wednesday Wednesday Adams in Wednesday. The series really helped launch Jenna's already growing career, and of course, the series was picked up for a second season. However, it seems that Jenna may end up writing that entire season herself, because the writers of season one just didn't do a great job according to her. A while back and before the writer's strike, Jenna made comments about having to put her foot down on the set of Wednesday. According to her, the writing was just odd, and honestly, Jenna made so many good points. She felt that the things that Wednesday was doing made no sense. She she was involved in a love triangle that was just weird and honestly distracted from all the good parts of the show, and some of the lines that she was supposed to say were cut after she expressed concerns. There was a line of dialogue that saw Wednesday say the words, oh my god, I love it, ugh, I can't believe I just said that, to which Jenna said, no. Wednesday is not some valley girl with an emo side, she chops the heads off siblings if they let her. She claims that a ton of writers will agree that she is difficult and unprofessional at times because that was the only way to make her character work. She'd literally change the dialogue during a take and then the writers were just constantly confused. Ortega has claimed to be very protective of her character and has every intention to make season two better in every way, dropping any love stories surrounding Wednesday and instead opting to dive in deep on the dark and macabre that Tim Burton is really known for. The writers released sarcastic statements claiming that Jenna should really just write the next season herself since she's so good at it. Okay, let her do it, it's probably gonna be great. Number six, Justin Bieber. In 2015, Justin was performing on the Today Show, debuting his new song, What Do You Mean? During his performance, he got super excited and started dancing while singing, you know, one normally would. But moments later, he was caught on air dissing the camera operator, saying that he might as well not dance since the cameras don't even move. He said next time he won't dance. It seems like a waste of effort. He was visibly annoyed as he ended his time on the show. Fans of Justin were very quick to question his aggression in the moment. Before he was cut off by a commercial break, Justin starts to rant about what he even does this for and if they're just gonna, well, then, then, and then he was cut off. Not long after this on-air mishap, Justin actually announced that he was gonna take a little break from music. The two seem to be unrelated, but hey man, you never know. Maybe he had some real regrets when it comes to scolding a camera person that did nothing to you before that. But come on, out of all the mistreatment scandals surrounding Justin Bieber, this one's the silliest. When Justin appeared on the set of CSI, he actually upset an entire crew crew with his behavior. According to several eyewitness accounts, Justin locked a producer in a closet out of frustration and put his fist through a cake that was on the craft service table. Justin dismissed these claims as baseless rumors, but like a lot of people saw him doing that, so I don't know, you be the judge. Number five, Barbara Cochran. Ah, Shark Tank, what a wonderful program. Seeing some up and coming entrepreneurs get their start thanks to the endorsement and partnership of the Sharks. One of the Sharks, Barbara Cochran, was blasted online after a resurfaced clip showed her saying how much she loved to fire people. Firing someone is a difficult conversation, doesn't usually end well for both people involved. However, for Barbara, it's her favorite thing in the entire world. These comments resurfaced as there is a labor shortage across 
across the US, so that didn't help. In an interview on the Diary of a CEO podcast, she revealed that she loves firing people, especially on Fridays. What she loves to do is pop by someone's desk on Wednesday, book an appointment for Friday. Instead of giving them a proper reason for firing, though, she'll actually just tell them that, you know, she's not really sure why. They just don't really fit with the company. I don't know what makes this woman think it is a fun thing to be fired, but nonetheless, people are fuming. Many fans simply wonder if she owns a Dalmatian coat. More than likely. Number four, Christina Aguilera. There have been a few instances of Christina being a menace to her staff or just people that she's worked with in the past. Today we're going to focus on her time as a judge on The Voice. According to several sources close to the show, she was a nightmare to work with. Apparently she always shows up late and just doesn't seem to care or apologize for holding up filming of the show. To make things worse, she is constantly arguing with Adam Levine. As early as 2012, insiders told production on The Voice that they much preferred Adam Levine to Christina. Apparently the makeup crew of the show acts as a NASCAR pit team. Every time herself and Adam get heated, whether it's on or off camera, she's directed to the makeup team to cool off. They then apply product to her face like she's Ricky Bobby in the middle of a race. According to producers, she made outrageous demands, including the introduction of a foot massager to the staff. Someone's only job on set was to massage Christina's feet every 30 minutes. No thank you. Number three, Bill Murray and Harold Remus. Now, it may come as a shock to you that two of the four members of the legendary Ghostbusters just kind of despised each other, but it turns out that this is very much the case. While filming Bill's more popular film Groundhog Day, it turns out that the star was in a rough place. According to the crew, he tormented Harold, the director of the project, constantly, showing up late, being consistently unavailable, and just being overall really mean. Apparently the main cause for concern was just Bill's overall feelings about the movie. He took issue with the way it was filmed, some of the dialogue he had to say, and just seemed to disagree with Harold about everything. Despite their collaborations before this on movies like Ghostbusters and Caddyshack, they just did not see eye to eye on anything. Bill wanted this movie to be more serious and philosophical, but Harold had to constantly remind him it was a comedy. At the end of the day, the constant arguments made a terrible time on set. Number two, Katherine Heigl. Kathy was riding high back in 2007. The former Grey's Anatomy star not only won an Emmy for Best Supporting Actress in a Drama Series, but she also began transitioning to the big screen with the success of her first feature film, Knocked Up, alongside comedy legend Seth Rogen. Now, unfortunately, her rise to the top quickly became a free fall into an active volcano following an ill-fated Vanity Fair interview the following January. In the interview, Catherine made a move that still has people scratching their heads to this day. She openly bashed the film that made her famous, claiming that it painted women as shrew, humorless, and uptight, while also placing blame on Seth Rogen for writing the men as lovable, goofy, and fun. The film still sits at an impressive 89% on Rotten Tomatoes because, now while she might claim the project was problematic, the final product is just a fun love story filled with good jokes and performances and a good story. Seth felt betrayed by the comments as they never had a fight on set and it never seemed like she was uncomfortable at any point. These comments, combined with some negativity towards her Grey's Anatomy writers, caused her agents to drop her as a client and her time in Hollywood quickly came to a screeching halt. And at number one, Bill Murray and Lucy Liu. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was massively successful thanks to its stars, Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and of course Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. This movie was filled with action, comedy, and one of the weirdest performances ever given by Crispin Glover. That dude needs help. One interesting addition to the cast, though, was the inclusion of Bill Murray as the main man behind the mic. Bosley. Now apparently the set was anything but a comedy though after Bill found out a scene was rewritten while he was away. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and Bill Murray's outburst. Apparently Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be refilmed and instead of using a stand-in, they just decided that it could go on without Murray's character being involved. So the scene was filmed and that was that. When he returned to find that the changes were made while he was gone, he was furious. He reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At the time, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her, she didn't write the scene, she wasn't the director, and she asked Bill if he was talking to her, and apparently that sent him into a meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy's pretty proud for speaking her mind, despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time, and so far it looks like Bill's career has suffered from it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior, but we could do a whole top 10 list about Bill Murray. 
Murray. Number 10, Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro was brought to court thanks to an ex-assistant and he lost. Robert's production company was found liable this past week for gender discrimination and retaliation and were ordered to pay $1.3 million to Graham Chase Robinson. While Robert himself was not found guilty, his company was. Graham accused De Niro of workplace mistreatment during her time as his assistant and financial advisor. Between 2008 and 2019, her life was a living nightmare. Robert had apparently been subjecting her to inappropriate behavior on a lot of levels. The allegations range from Robert swearing and hurling insults to asking Robinson to scratch his back. Literally. He admitted to almost all of the accusations, but gave excuses for each one. For instance, it was only two back scratches, okay? No big deal. Robinson claimed that she quit during a full-on mental breakdown after being overwhelmed by the work and Robert's role as her boss. She's not worked in over four years despite applying for a reported 643 jobs. In that time, she estimated losing around $12 million, both monetarily and mentally. The jury calculated the exact amount that she would have earned had Robert not bullied her into submission, which was not $12 million, but like I said, somewhere closer to $1.3. That is still a lot of money. As I said, Robert De Niro was not personally responsible, so the payout came from his production company, but he has maintained that his assistant exaggerated their claims for profit. Number nine, Madonna. Madonna's voice is known around the world, but so much so in fact that she can be a bit mean from time to time. Not only have there been eyewitness accounts of her being rude to fans, but she is also a bit stingy when it comes to her staff. A few years back, an anonymous source revealed that when one of Madonna's dancers broke her her arm during practice, instead of being more concerned and helping, she had a full on meltdown, berating the dancer for being so bad at their job. There was also allegations that she said there will be no fat country singers in her presence, only she didn't say re-singers. Another source backed these stories up and added that Madonna does not pay very well, but she knows that she can pay people to work grueling hours for low income because hey, she's Madonna. There are probably some people out there who would work for a turkey sandwich just to be someone's assistant. White bread with lettuce, please. The source agreed that if there is one common theme with Madonna and her staff, it's that her ego overshadows them and they're supposed to feel lucky to be in her presence. Neither source specified when they quit, but considering the stories, it sounded like they were with Madonna for quite some time. Number eight. Lizzo. It was recently revealed that a lawsuit was filed against the famous pop singer Lizzo, accusing her of creating a toxic work environment and mistreating her background dancers. The accusations range from fat shaming her crew to forcing them to eat strange fruit from strange places. Yum yum. One of the dancers, Crystal Davies, who is part of the lawsuit, was fired for secretly recording a meeting between herself and Lizzo. The meeting was about the dancer's performance on stage recently, and Lizzo apparently disliking the the weight that she had been gaining, claiming that she wasn't committing to her role. According to the plaintiffs, Lizzo made them work ridiculous hours, including up to 12 hour rehearsal days. One of the dancers recounted an experience of having to use the washroom and being forced to do it in her pants while rehearsing so that she didn't lose any time. Like, hey, uh, Lizzo, if someone has to use the bathroom, just let them go. It took longer for them to get that poor woman a new pair of pants than it would have to just let her take five minutes. When the news broke, the world collectively turned on on Lizzo and so far have believed every single word that has been said. Now, while Lizzo continues to deny the allegations, her career has gotten worse and worse. A lot of her live stage shows have been canceled, her music's been pulled from radio stations, and there is still currently an investigation taking place. So, it's not good. Not, it's not good for Lizzie. Number seven, Rihanna. A lot of one name artists on this list. Is it really a shock to learn that Rihanna does not talk to the hired help? Well, ignoring somebody is one of the meanest things that you can do to a person. Making them feel like they don't exist or are not even on the same level as you and they don't deserve to even be acknowledged. Like that just hurts. Most celebrities know how not to do that, but others seem to only have this negative setting in their soul. Over the years, it's been said that pop singing sensation Rihanna doesn't even look or speak to her staff. An anonymous source revealed that Rihanna literally refers to staff as the hired help. She also falls asleep when she's getting her makeup done, which must be great for everyone involved with that, just Rihanna snoring in a chair. She's just warming up her vocal cords, it's fine, it's fine. 
Rihanna is also known for being pretty rude to her fans as well. One lady won backstage passes for herself and her family, but when they got back to do their meet and greet portion of the tickets, Rihanna didn't even look at them and asked one of her assistants to come sign something for them, sitting in her makeup chair like a Disney villain shooing people away. Number six, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is known for a lot of things. A star is born, her music career, but for ex-assistant Jennifer O'Neill, Lady Gaga is simply known as evil. O'Neill filed a lawsuit against her former boss in 2013 for $400,000, the money that she claimed that she was owed from her time working as Gaga's assistant. Clapping back against the claims, Gaga got heated. Try saying that 10 times fast. She counterclaimed that she was forced to do most of the assistant's work herself, complaining that she was forced to carry large bags to her room all by herself, like a normal person. O'Neill worked with Gaga for 13 months on a $75,000 salary and accompanied her on her Monster Ball World Tour. In trying to justify her actions as a boss, she admitted to partying late at night, sleeping in all day, and literally screaming in the streets. During the court hearing for the case, she also launched into an F-word fueled tirade, swearing over and over at Jennifer. Gaga was basically blasting this woman with allegations and just claiming that everything she was saying was false. Gaga claimed that Jennifer was always made to be an equal on tour, where Jennifer claims to have been overwhelmed with work. Instead of paying O'Neill the damages, Gaga claimed that she was going to spread the wealth to the people that currently work for her, aka the ones who really deserve it. Eventually they were able to settle the situation outside of court, but that exact dollar exchange is not known. Number 5. Christian Bale Rumors that the former Batman actor is mean to his co-stars and his crew have run rampant for years, ever since his infamous voice recording captured on the set of Terminator Judgment Day. For those of you who don't know, he shouted at a guy for being in his line of sight during a take. Basically it. However, a former publicist of Christian's named Harrison Chung shared a ton of behind the scenes stories, including the fact that Christian was a very mean person, to the point where he literally made little kids cry when they approached him as fans. Instead of appreciating his reach and enjoying his time with fans, he reportedly responds to them with anger and a lecture about personal space. Chung claimed that working for Christian was a nightmare, so much so that he had to take years of therapy. There have been a few stories regarding Christian and his anger over the years, but making kids cry and forcing this guy to go to therapy? means there is seriously a problem with Christian Bale. Number 4. Ellen DeGeneres Ellen had one of the most successful daytime talk shows of all time right up until 2020. Her show became overwhelmed with accusations of toxic work environment from former employees. There were claims that Ellen's happy exterior was nothing more than a facade put in place to keep her audience on her team. A small bit of proof came when she accused Fifty Shades of Grey actress Dakota Johnson for not inviting her to a birthday party, and Dakota reminded her that she actually did do that, but she never got a response back. Fans started questioning this awkward moment, and the cracks in Ellen's appearance began to grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, an article was released containing testimonies from several former employees, so much so that she was forced to cancel herself and her show for good. Number 3. Kim Kardashian Kim Kardashian is arguably the most famous of her Kardashian sisters, and would also seem to be the busiest. For example, Kim has four kids, a skincare line, her Skims brand that she attends law school, co-founded an equity team, and recently even hopped on the podcast train, in addition to filming her new reality show on Hulu. Now you may be asking yourself, how does one woman do all of this by herself? <laughs> she pays people to do her job, of course. She has multiple assistants and nannies to help her stay above this overwhelming workload, but has been known to treat them as lesser than. For instance, on several occasions, Kim and her daughter North would go to lunch, accompanied by their nanny, but Kim made her not only sit at a separate table far away from them, but she is known to make her nannies walk walk at least 10 feet away from them at all times, unless she has multiple people with her and then she makes them walk behind her like a flying V formation because it looks cool. If they walk near her or attempt to walk side by side, she just kind of blows up and screams at them behind closed doors. Needless to say, she's had many nannies over the years and has probably made them all cry at least once. Number 2. 
Kourtney Kardashian. Now, while Kim may not be the best boss in the world, Kourtney Kardashian is known as the absolute worst boss of all time. According to former nannies, Kourtney was by far the worst Kardashian to work for. Not only is she a neat freak, needing every single thing to be exactly where it needs to be, she is also known for being super cheap. Even once calling a grocery store while she was shopping to compare the price of a chicken breast, because if anyone needs that extra 99 cents, it's Kourtney Kardashian. But this isn't the worst thing that she's done. At one point, Kourtney's daughter had bitten a nanny so hard that she had to quit, but instead of letting it go and taking responsibility for not teaching her daughter how to act properly, she berated the nanny, telling her that she should have said something to her daughter in the moment. Because yes, blame the women that you're paying to raise your kids instead of the kid itself who probably has abandonment issues. Number one, Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner is the youngest of the Kardashian clan, but she is also extremely successful for her age. In 2019, she was on the cover of Forbes magazine as the youngest self-made billionaire ever following a partnership between her cosmetic brand and Ulta, which is a beauty salon company. This would allow the brand previously only available online and in stores that randomly popped up here and there to be placed on shelves in Ulta's 1,000 plus stores. Unfortunately, the true nature of where these products products come from made people kind of step back a bit. Many employees at the factory that mix and package these makeups and beauty products have reported that they were never given proper safety equipment that you would require to do your job. Like they were only given hair nets, lab coats, and safety goggles, which meant that their hands were just good and free to get burned and their faces were as well. Workers would regularly report migraines, chemical burns, all that fun stuff. But if this isn't bad enough, they were also forced to act as human test subjects for Kylie's products. Kylie was so proud of her company not testing things on animals, but I believe testing things on people is just so much worse. Just a little bit evil. Just a, She's a super villain. Number 10, Tom Hardy versus Charlize Theron. Mad Max Fury Road is a forgotten gem in cinema history. It featured little to no CGI despite having some insane visuals, and it also featured some stellar performances from its cast, including Nicholas Holt, Charlize Theron, and Tom Hardy. Charlize and Tom played the main characters, Furiosa and Max, and while their on-screen characters ended up working together in the end, on set there was a very different vibe. Tom had a bad habit of showing up late all the time. Meanwhile, Charlize was a brand new mother who would be there on time every day while her kids were forced to be taken care of by someone else. In a book called Blood, Sweat and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road, writer Kyle Buchanan shared an instance on set between Charlize and Tom. Everyone was on set at 8 a.m ready to shoot except for Mr. Hardy. But to make a point, Charlize took her place and stayed there until Tom showed up. Three hours later, she didn't move a muscle and according to the crew, she was beyond furious. When Tom finally showed up, she asked him how he could be so disrespectful and said that they should find this CNX Tuesday $100,000 for every minute that he's held up the crew. Yeah, she didn't say CNX Tuesday, but the word she did say set Tom off. He rushed up to her and pulled out the whole, what'd you say to me? thing, you know, like, oh, a big tough guy, I can't hear anything. Overall, Charlize felt very threatened by Tom and had to have an assistant follow her around on set as a buffer between the two. When the shoot wrapped, the tension was gone and things seemed to have gotten better, but the difficult shoot combined with the stress of the project is most likely the reason that there was never a Mad Max 2. Number 9, Ryan Gosling versus Rachel McAdams. The Notebook is considered to be one of the greatest romantic movies ever made in Hollywood. Oddly enough, the on-screen couple did not get along at all during the shoot. They would constantly fight on set and seem to have completely different ideas on how several scenes should be played out. One day in particular was pretty exciting for anyone who wasn't involved, you know, drama watchers who were sipping their tea. Ryan called over the director and demanded that Rachel be replaced by another actress to read her lines with him. In front of 150 crew members, he claimed that Rachel wasn't giving him anything to work with and the two would constantly yell on set. Their toxic on set feud somehow morphed into a toxic relationship that lasted for two years. Anyone who worked on the set blames them for constant schedule setbacks and creating just an overall difficult work environment. Number eight, LL Cool J versus Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx has been a huge star in the world of Hollywood over the years, working with several acclaimed directors in every genre under the sun, but like most actors, Jamie had to start somewhere. And that somewhere was in the film Any Given Sunday from 1999, alongside Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, Dennis Quaid, and of course, 
LL Cool J. Cool J and Jamie played teammates in the football centric flick, and not only do their characters constantly fight on screen, but behind the scenes they had an actual brawl that ended in Miami County Police being called in. During one scene, the two were scripted to fight and filmed the first two takes as planned. However, some offset beef made its way in front of the camera when Jamie struck Cool J for real, splitting his lip open and an all out beatdown took place, leaving Jamie unconscious and in the hospital. They had to stop production because they weren't sure when Jamie would actually be able to return and film his scenes. When Fox did return to the set, it was with a small crew of friends and his manager. Waiting to greet them was LL Cool J and half of Brooklyn, according to the director, who stated that the tension was only settled after the real life football players that the characters were based on came on set to defuse the situation. Number 7. Ryan Reynolds vs Wesley Snipes Ryan Reynolds is known for many things. He's got his toe dipped into the world of adult beverages, wireless cell phone coverage, and he's even a soccer coach. Or football for our friends in the UK. One of his most iconic roles as an actor is of course the Merc with the Mouth, Mr. Deadpool himself. However, in 2004, Ryan was a part of a different Marvel movie. As some may know, the original Marvel movie that started this whole live action comic trend was the Blade Trilogy, starring Wesley Snipes as the titular vampire hunter. By the time the third movie of the franchise rolled around, Wesley Snipes was just kinda done with working on set. He hated the way the franchise was turning out, and all of his creative suggestions were quickly shut down. His main problem was the fact that Blade Trinity was written as like a straight up comedy movie when the previous entries were more dark, action based movies, filled with gore and some pretty stellar fight sequences. So when Van Wilder was cast to be his co-star, he kinda gave up. He famously refused to film several scenes unless that he was allowed to wear his shades on set. Apparently he was like micro napping during takes, because he just didn't care anymore. Ryan played a big part in his difficulty enjoying the shoot. Apparently he made it his mission to make Wesley snap. He'd constantly do bits, push things too far, and just the general Ryan Reynolds chaos that we're all used to at this point. At the end of the day, Blade Trinity ended up burying the franchise and was one of the most chaotic and toxic films ever made in 2004. Two, number 6. Vin Diesel vs The Rock Remember everybody, family. That's it. That's the that's my intro. Dwayne and Vin Diesel met on set of the fifth Fast and Furious movie, Fast Five. Very creative title. This was Vin Diesel's fifth movie, but it was Dwayne's first, not just in the franchise, but in the acting world in general. At first, everything seemed to be okay with these guys on set. Fast Five made a lot of money, and they asked Dwayne to return for a six and seven. However, something changed in 2016 when, in a now deleted post, Dwayne called one of his fellow Cast Seven co stars a candied bum bum. He didn't say bum bum, but I'm not allowed to say that real word on the internet, so I must speak like a toddler. He actually said a word that rhymes with grass. Rumors began to fly that this was more than likely referring to Vin Diesel. Rumors proven only a week after that post was made. Following the premiere of Fate of the Furious, Johnson posted on Instagram thanking all of his fellow cast members by name, but he left Vin out of the equation. It was later confirmed by Fast and Furious co-star Michelle Rodriguez that there was a massive amount of tension on set of the film. There were bros at first, but as the time went on and the franchise evolved, so did their egos. They fought constantly over who should receive the most screen time and who was the real lead of the franchise. You know, toxic masculinity and all that. To keep both actors happy, Johnson was given a spin-off in which he co-starred as the lead alongside Jason Statham, and Vin Diesel was left right where he belongs with his family. I know it's a bad impression, but it's a fun word to say in his voice. Number 5. Bill Murray vs Lucy Liu Does anybody else just get the most hardcore Charlie's Angels flashbacks when they see these two together? Huh? No? Eh. Fair. Sony's first foray into the world of Charlie's Angels was a massive success when it was released, starring Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, and Lucy Liu as the titular Angels. The movie was filled with action, a little bit of comedy, and one of the strangest performances ever delivered by Crispin Glover. Seriously, that guy needs help. One interesting addition to the cast was the inclusion of Ghostbusters alumni Bill Murray as the man behind the microphone, Mr. Bosley. Apparently the set was anything but a comedy, after Bill found out a scene had been rewritten without his knowledge. In an interview with the news outlet Deadline, Lucy Liu spoke up about her time on set and the situation surrounding Bill's outburst. Apparently, Bill was away for a family event when a scene needed to be reshot for the movie. But instead of using a stand-in, it was decided that the scene could be filmed without Murray's character being involved. So it went on without him. When he returned to find that the change had been made while he was gone, he was furious and reportedly shouted at half of the crew, including Lucy herself. At first, she wasn't sure why he was aiming his comments at her. She didn't write 
write the scene, she wasn't the director, so she asked if Bill was talking to her specifically, which apparently sent him into a full blown meltdown. She decided to speak out on Bill's behavior on set, and he was ultimately written out of the sequel. Lucy is proud for speaking her mind despite being a relatively unknown actor at the time, and is very glad that Bill's career seems to have suffered for it, because Lucy was just the first of many celebrities to comment on his behavior. We'll save that for another time. Number 4. Will Smith vs. Janet Hubert Will Smith got his big break in the acting world thanks to his successful time on the hit sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel Air. The show followed Will as the titular prince, living with his wealthy family in Bel Air, surrounded by cousins, uncles, and of course, Aunt Viv. In season 1, Aunt Viv was played by a woman named Janet Hubert Witten, who, as many know, was recasted after an onset feud with Will Smith just went a little bit too far. According to Will, Janet viewed him as the antagonist of her life. She had been in the business for years when suddenly this man popped into her life, and she held a tinge of jealousy towards Will as he just walked into town and he got a gig. Well, that's what happens when you're good at your job, Janet. She was trying to convince the producers to give her character more screen time and allow her to breathe on camera but they said no because it was not the Aunt Viv show. She fought back hard but it was ultimately decided that she would be asked to sit out for the rest of the series and be replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed who is the Aunt Viv that everybody knows and loves. Number 3. Tom Hardy vs Shia LaBeouf Making a return on this list is Mr. Tom Hardy, but this time it's with Shia. This was an onset feud that was innocent from the perspective of the actors, but not the people who were making their movie. In 2012, Shia and Tom starred in a period piece crime drama called Lawless. It was a pretty solid movie featuring stellar performances from both of its leading men. In 2019, on an episode of the popular talk show Hot Ones, Shia addressed the rumors that he had knocked out his on-screen partner Tom during the shoot. According to Shia, the two were closer than people think and acted more like college buddies than enemies. Shia claims that the two would wrestle a lot on set and that it would sometimes distract people from their work. The rumor that he knocked Tom out was actually started by Tom after he fell down the stairs one night and apparently he was getting ready for his role as Bane and in Christopher Nolan's third Batman movie at the time and Shia claims that the main reason he wanted people to think he was in a fight was again, big tough guy. Their feud may have been innocent between themselves but to everyone on the outside, Tom Hardy was about to pile drive Shia LaBeouf every five minutes. Number two, Ray Fisher versus Joss Whedon. Ray played a major role in the 2017 DC movie Justice League as Cyborg. Not only was this the first live action iteration of the character for film, but he was also the first black superhero in a leading role in DC. According to Fisher, he was mindful of this and he delivered the best performance that he could, and honestly, it was a great performance. There have been way worse actors involved with DC, and Cyborg was one of the best parts of the 2017 version. Now, I keep saying that because as some may not know, the original director of the movie, Zack Snyder, was forced to drop out of the shoot midway through production due to a personal tragedy. The studio decided to bring in Avengers director Joss Whedon to finish the project, and at first he was just supposed to direct the movie, but he ended up rewriting most of the script and reshooting several of the scenes already finished by Zack. This is where the tension started. Joss did not appreciate any outside input on his script, and Ray was a very vocal performer who wanted to stick to the original vision that Zack Snyder had. A vision that we actually got to see in 2021 thanks to the Snyder Cut of the film being released. It's two more hours, but it's way better. Ray claimed that Joss was not only dismissive towards his ideas, but that he was an absolute monster to work with. Following the release of the film, Fisher voiced his complaints to DC and Warner Brothers, who opened a brief investigation into the situation, but quickly dismissed the case, claiming that there was insufficient evidence to prove he was telling the truth. Thankfully, several of his co-stars and crew members backed up those claims that Joss was a very angry, racist, and just manipulative boss, creating an extremely toxic environment on set. The backlash from fans, combined with the hashtag Snyder Cut, allowed Warner Brothers to finish Zack's original vision for the project and released a four hour Snyder Cut in 2021. Not only is Cyborg's storyline much better in this version, but the project overall is considered to be one of the best DC movies ever made. And at number one, James Franco versus Tyrese Gibson. So this feud was brought to my attention by a fellow host here at the studio and I had never actually heard of this movie before today, but but once I found out it was between James Franco and Tyrese, oh, we had to include it on this list. These two start opposite each other in a 2005 dramatic piece called Annopolis. The story follows Franco's character wanting to attend the titular Naval Academy and entering into a boxing tournament against some of the Navy's best and brightest. His main opponent is Tyrese Gibson. Throughout the majority of the filming, James and Tyrese would regularly practice the choreography for the final fight of the film. Now, 
Method acting is one thing, when you just pretend to be someone else all the time and that's it. But it's different when you're literally punching your co-star for real. Instead of the normal film choreography allowing actors to fake hit each other, Franco was throwing real punches without warning. Gibson tried to be civil at first and asked him to lighten up. Franco ignored him and just continued to box his heart out. When asked about the incident in interviews, Franco defended himself by saying that he was aware that he made the set difficult at times and claimed to be so wrapped up in his role that that he probably wasn't as friendly as he could be. Gibson, however, holds a massive grudge towards Franco, claiming that he would never step foot in the same room as this man ever again. Good news for Tyrese, James got cancelled and Fast 11's coming soon. And Starting in at number 10, we have Antonio Brown. Former NFL wide receiver Antonio Brown would find himself under fire from fans and other celebrities after he chose to stand by Kanye West after Kanye made some anti-Semitic comments. Antonio, who played in the NFL back in 2021, said said he will still remain in his role as president for Donda Sports, which is Kanye's sport agency. With Antonio remaining true to its mission of Donda, he's also channeled his buddy's controversial campaign by saying and supporting Kanye's WLM movement. Kanye has had a lot of criticism over his WLM shirt that he wore during his Yeezy fashion show. Despite the negative reactions, he has still gone on to make headlines for anti-Semitic comments. Overall, the controversy, both Antonio and Kanye have started to become really close friends and they've even started to work on some music with each other. It also seems like Kanye isn't the only one doing some pretty odd things lately as Brown has had his own share of controversy when a video that was released back in October showed himself exposing himself to a woman in Dubai. With Antonio calling Kanye's comments reactionary and selective outrage, he will continue to bring his new ideas, experiences, and design to our world while remaining in support of the humanity Kanye is bringing into the world. Number 9. Kim Kardashian While we all notice the prospect of an epic, especially revolting fashion industry scandal unfolding the response of some of the world's biggest celebrities, caused many of us to be dumbfounded for continuing to support Cedric Charbit and the brand he represents as the CEO for Balenciaga just days before America's Thanksgiving holiday, the fashion house of Balenciaga would trigger some major backlash for its 2022 holiday advertising campaign, which toyed with some of the most deprived evils known to man, with the campaign exploiting children. When the photos emerged of little girls holding on to handbags that were shaped like teddy bears, wearing some pretty outrageous gear, and a childlike drawing of a devil, we were all left feeling sick. At the end of the controversy, Balenciaga would try to claim that their plush bear bag should have never featured children in its campaign, and that they had no idea that the advertisement contained these images because they never approved the images. However, knowing that all companies have the final say to anything hitting the media, we all knew this was one giant lie made for for the company to try to save their reputation. Kim Kardashian still choosing to stand by Balenciaga, a brand she seems to get all of her leotarded gloved outfits from. After days of being silent, she would say I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaign and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take necessary measures for this to never happen again. While Kim has decided that she will be reevaluating her relationship with the brand, many of us have been disgusted at the fact that Kim is being a coward for not immediately cutting ties off with the brand, and we're honestly all disappointed that she is a grown up with her own children who should be protecting other children, but instead she's failing to protect the most innocent and vulnerable by supporting a brand that is always out here showing huge levels of controversy consistently. Hey Peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to give this a video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number 8, Diddy. When Diddy decided to hop on the newest train in pop culture that revolved around cancel culture, many fans were pretty disappointed in his decision. When Diddy went on to say, as a music family, none of us are saints, none of us are out here without things that happen to them in life. When the 2022 Billboard Music Awards came around, Diddy squarely stood behind Org's decision to invite Travis Scott and Morgan Wallen to perform. While explaining that one of the things he wants to do is cancel the uncancel, as the trend needs to be stopped, he would also go on to say that Travis went through a tragedy and Morgan hurled the N-word 
while talking to his boy. People make mistakes. Now we're moving forward on with love and respect for everybody that was hurt or affected. It's time to forgive. However, some actions are just unforgivable. As Morgan had been canceled from seven award shows last year, after the incident rose, his music sales would actually rise during the period. As for Travis Scott, on the other hand, he pretty much was sidelined for months after the Astro World tragedy, having a hundred thousand people present and asking them to search the stage and ignoring an ambulance in the crowd was just disappointing to see. And the fact that he is out here supporting it is just heartbreaking. Number seven, Bella Thorne. So last year, when Army Hammer's fantasies were exposed and some unverified screenshots would show Army making some pretty serious claims, when it came to his fantasies, although the topic was trending online, many celebrities choose to remain silent about the situation, except for actor Bella Thorne, who took to her Instagram to defend. She would say, I honestly can't believe this. People are crazy to fake this kind of stuff. Poor guy and his kids like leave his family alone. No way he's a freak. Also, there's a million fake screenshots going around. People would certainly begin to criticize Bella's support by saying Bella Thorne is trash. How do some people still not see this? And Bella, Army probably wasn't thinking about the good of his children when he told these girls about his fantasies. With Bella believing that she had more insight and wisdom when it came around to how Army Hammer used his power to push boundaries with other women, the fact that she can sit here and claim that she's an ally to women and survivors, but doesn't let women have the chance to share their stories before claiming it as fake DMs caused a lot of people to tell the star that no one actually asked for her opinion. Coming in at number six, we have Bill Gates. When Bill Gates admitted that he was fundraising meetings that were held with late billionaire GE, he would discuss that the role that his relationship had with Jeffrey played a huge part in his divorce with Melinda Gates. When Bill sat down with Sunday Times, he would say that he didn't realize that by having those meetings, it would be seen as giving Jeffrey credibility. You're almost saying I forgive that type of behavior or something so clearly that the way it's seen that I made a huge mistake not understanding that. With Melinda speaking publicly about her separation from Bill, she would tell CBS that many things ultimately contributed to her decision to end the pair's marriage. She would then reveal a bunch of secrets that included that there were whispers for years about Gates' extramarital relationships for people who work for him, and that his behavior was known as an open secret. Bill has always been scheduling off-site meetings that weren't on his calendar with Jeffrey, having multiple employees of Bill and Melinda's foundation visit his mansion and speak to the foundation about a proposed dollar charitable fund after he served jail time. And number five, Sharon Osborne. When Piers Morgan voiced his disbelief in what Meghan Markle had to say about her mental health to Oprah, he would fake the raft of thousands of fans. When Sharon Osbourne would tweet her support for her longtime friend, this would cause a confrontation with the talk co-host Cheryl Underwood, who would then ask Osbourne on air if she was a racist. Shortly after, the two would engage in this huge altercation, and the conflict would start an investigation by CBS, which would force Sharon to apologize. Sharon, in writing, would then say, to anyone of color that I offended, or to anyone that feels confused or let down by what I said, I'm truly sorry, she wrote in a statement. I panicked, felt blindsided, got defensive, and allowed my fear and horror of being accused of being a racist take over. After her statement in support for Pierce Morgan continued, she would face further claims by her colleagues' remarks, which some she would go on to admit to and some she would deny. Osborne would then join her friend Pierce on talk TV, where the presenters hold nothing back and say what they feel and not following one party at all. And number four, James Charles. After Charlie D'Amelio uploaded a YouTube video that many people considered offensive as it showed her and her sister Dixie spitting out food in front of a personal chef, many users would deem it inappropriate. James Charles, who was also at the dinner, wouldn't be called out for any inappropriate behavior, surprisingly, like Charlie and Dixie. However, that didn't stop him from speaking his mind about cancel culture and the D'Amelios dropping followers. James would go on to say the Charlie situation is not sitting right with me right now. 100 million followers in one year and y'all expect her to know how to be a perfect role model? Backlash because she's a picky either and made a joke about milestones. 30 plus year olds dragging someone half their age. Feels familiar. However, I think a lot of people weren't upset about the fact that the girls didn't like the food, but the fact that they were beginning to spit up 
the food in front of the chef and making hurtful comments about it. The fact James tried to support this toxic behavior is just a little outrageous because even with age, you can't justify someone's poor table manners because we were all taught better to react during these situations at a young age. And number three, boozy. After the baby made some homophobic remarks during his set at the 2021 Rolling Loud Festival in Miami, Boozy would take to his Instagram Live to rant about the displeasure of people canceling the baby over his remarks. Shortly after the baby's performance, even little Naz would make a joke that him and Jack Harlow would be wearing nothing during the VMA's performance while performing industry baby for charity. And this also really didn't sit well with Boozy as he would claim no one should be picking sides over the baby saying some wild things. Boozy definitely wasn't done with his rant and he would continue on in another video about his outrage over Little Nas's announcement. With several artists including thousands of fans speaking out against the baby, it's extremely hurtful remarks that were made, all Boozy did was add more fuel and stigma to the discrimination that surrounds the LGBTQ community. The mistruths that were used by the baby and supported by Boozy had no place in society and the fact that the musicians used their voice to spread so much hate towards the most marginalized people in our community is just saddening. Boozy's out here saying people shouldn't be taking sides yet. He took sides to spread hate instead of using his voice for good. And number two, Bo Derek. Now the Kardashian family has been slammed for blackfishing for years, especially when it comes to their braids. When Kim Kardashian West was accused of cultural appropriation after crediting actress Bo Derek as the inspiration behind her box braids, she would even go on to credit the braids as Bo Derek braids. Now Bo Derek would come to the star's defense. So Bo Derek, who is now 61, wore her hair like this while she was in the 1970s film 10 which featured the star running down a beach. Bo Derek would take to her Twitter account to say, hey it's just a hairstyle that I worked on in the movie 10. Kim Kardashian calls it Bo Derek braids because she copied my pattern of braids. I copied it from Anne Margaret's backup singer from her Las Vegas show. And we all copy Queen Nefertari. I hope her royal highness is flattered. While Derek has referred to the Egyptian queen, the two came under fire for not recognizing the styles and the history and origins and framing the looks as something new or edgy. Many people have been forced to cut their braids out to play sports or even to attend class, so both celebrities not understanding the hurt braids can cause was the concept of culture vulturing and it was pretty disappointing to see. And at number one today, we have Nikita Dragon. When the drama between James Charles and Tati Westbrook erupted online, things would become more complicated after Tati would reveal James was manipulating men that were still emerging into adulthood. Tati would also reveal that James was spreading lies about her and betraying her after she spent years helping him with his brand. After Nikita Dragon showed the screenshots that Sugar Bear agreed to give Charles influencer tickets if he did a promotion, she would force herself into a situation that definitely didn't look good on her image. Especially when James told Tati he was being swarmed by crazy fans to even get those tickets. Over the years, James has become a huge controversial figure and Nikita has consistently defended the star and has stayed by his side in the wake of all his bad behavior with James manipulating younger men, Nikita couldn't even understand the gravity of those topics and she's continued to support James even when more of the situation became to come into light. And at number 10, Oprah. This is one that was incredibly shocking to me because Oprah is one of the most beloved people in the world and other celebrities are constantly singing her praises, sharing how down to earth and nice Oprah is in real life. But it seems that Oprah might act a little differently when the cameras are not rolling or when she's not talking to another celebrity. A waiter that served Oprah for lunch shared their eye rolling encounter with the TV host. They wrote on Reddit, quote, Oprah didn't tip me on a $200 lunch. Instead, she signed a napkin for me and acted like she was doing me a huge favor. The kicker was when she walked in, they gave away all of my other tables so she didn't have to wait for anything. So I made $4 an hour for two hours for the privilege of serving Oprah. And she went on and on about signing a napkin that I never even asked for. It still makes me so mad when I hear that celebrities do not tip. Like Oprah is a billionaire. She can afford to dip. It's, it's so outrageous. And at number nine, Chevy Chase. This one is less of a shock because it's well known that Chevy Chase is not the greatest guy, although he plays lovable characters on screen. Many of his former SNL castmates have spoken out against him, and he was even banned from the show for his problematic behavior. One Reddit user shared that he is just as awful in real life. They wrote, quote, I saw Chevy Chase at a hotel once as a small nine-year-old, and I love the National Lampoon's vacation movies. When I asked for his autograph, he verbally went off on me. When my dad came over, he went off on him. He said something messed up, which is that my dad wasn't raising me right. The dude is a straight up jerk. 
And at number 8, Randy Jackson. Randy Jackson is another star I only ever heard good things about. He was known for being the good guy on American Idol compared to Simon Cowell who was notoriously savage towards contestants. But this might be another case of a celebrity being completely two-faced, acting nice and friendly while on camera but being completely different when cameras are not rolling. One Reddit user shared a behind the scenes look at Randy during a children's hospital event. Quote, Randy Jackson was invited to a telethon hosted by a hospital for children with disabilities, where my little sister lived until she passed away. Whenever the cameras were off, he'd hide in his hotel room and seem disgusted with the kids. He didn't want anything to do with them. When the cameras were on though, he was all smiles and hugs. It was so disheartening and disappointing to witness. It was over 10 years ago and I still remember it to this day. And at number 7, Carrie Underwood. This one honestly breaks my heart. This person who has seen a ton of celebrities in their workplace said that Carrie Underwood was by far the worst. They wrote, quote, I worked as a maintenance worker at a concert venue for a few summers and I bumped into several celebrities. But Carrie Underwood is the one who sticks out because of how demanding she always was. She refused to use a toilet if someone else had sat on the seat before her, so we had to buy new toilet seats every time she came. Considering how much we already had to fix, the last thing we wanted to do was pointlessly replace perfectly good toilet seats. In contrast, Reba McIntyre would always eat lunch with the staff and was always super chill. Can you imagine how entitled you have to be to demand like a new toilet basically? I cannot believe the venue agreed to do that for her. And at number 6, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is a famous actor and producer that fans might not know that much about. However, many celebrities have shared just how open hearted and kind that he is. Specifically, when Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were being interviewed by Oprah Winfrey after leaving the Royals, they shared that they were on the verge of being homeless with no security. However, Tyler Perry offered them his LA home to live in, along with giving them security until they were able to work it out. What an amazing guy, right? Well, apparently he doesn't treat normal people as nice. A person who worked to promote Perry's movie, Boo a Medea Halloween in 2016, shared his strange behavior and long list of demands. Apparently Perry flew private to the event with 13 of his staff. They were all forced in the back of the plane while he had the entire front to himself. They added, quote, his team sent our local agency a long list of demands and rules in anticipation of his arrival. Tyler wanted to be addressed referred to as Mr. Perry. We were prohibited to speak to him directly, only to his his team, room temperature orange Gatorade had to be in his green room, furniture wasn't allowed in his press interview suite, all media and press had to travel to him, Mr. Perry would not leave the hotel, and he wouldn't wait for anyone. The person added that his entire team seemed terrified of him. Halfway number 5, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is a celebrity with mixed reviews. Tons of people say she's down to earth and loves her fans, while others have shared some negative experiences with the star. One person shared their experience working with Minaj on set. Writing quote, I worked with Nicki Minaj before and while on a set with her, I was told not to look her in the face. She also had people move out of the room before she would come in the room. It was a whole ordeal. And at number 4, Miles Teller. Miles Teller being on this list should not be a shock to anyone because he is constantly called out for his horrible behavior. Even reporters that have interviewed him have called him entitled and rude. He's even trashed well loved and respected actors like John Cusack. When a reporter told him they are similar actors, Teller replied, quote, I guess we look alike. We did some similar movies. He wasn't traditionally good looking, who was offbeat and quirky but confident. I get it, but I don't want his career. And people who have met him in real life have had similar experiences. They wrote, quote, I met Miles Teller at a bar. He told my friend to buy him a drink and he still refused to take a picture with him. He ended up smacking my phone out of my hand and I'll never watch a movie with him in it again. And number 3, Jim Belushi. One fan shared just how terrible Jim Belushi was to them after they waited hours for an autograph. To make it worse, one of Belushi's co-stars was incredibly nice and made the contrast even worse. They wrote, quote, Years ago us kids waited for Jim Belushi and John Candy after they shot Only the Lonely in Chicago. I asked Belushi for an autograph and he literally called us a bunch of pieces of sh stupid kids and to get the F out of there. Then came Candy with a big old smile and a cigar hanging out of his mouth. And he spent the next 10 minutes signing autographs and thanking all of his fans. And at number 2, Alec Baldwin. Given all the scandals that Alec Baldwin has been in, it's no surprise that he's notoriously rude. He's attacked paparazzi, gotten in physical fights with hecklers, and he's been known to be very arrogant. One Reddit user spoke of their interaction and wrote, quote, One day in the Hamptons, I ran into Alec Baldwin and his wife and their two dogs. I was six, so I wanted to pet their dogs. Mind you, they left their dogs outside of the store, so I didn't know they were theirs. They quickly yanked their dogs away from me and yelled at me. I was six. That just proves the kind of people they are. I mean, who gets mad at a kid for petting a dog that you left outside? And finally, number one, Gene Simmons. 
Gene Simmons is apparently so awful in real life, multiple Reddit users shared negative experiences with him. One user said, quote, My brother met Gene Simmons backstage at a show he was playing in. Gene complimented my brother highly on his guitar playing, but then said, quote, Too bad you'll never make it, and just walked away. Another person told the story of his dad running into Simmons after one of his Kiss shows. The dad complimented Simmons on the show, and he replied, quote, I hope the next time you're sucking to impress someone, you pucker up more and then walked off. My dad was pissed and told his friends it was time to go, and the bartender stopped them on their way out. Before he left, Gene and his entourage told the bartender that my dad was paying for their drinks. It cost my dad almost $100 to pay for their alcohol. Oh, 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 oh,